I'm going to take you on my first ever backpacking trip to Joshua Tree, show you the breathtaking landscapes, and how I captured them in my sketchbook. You'll get a brief tour of some of the sketches and the stories behind them, so stick around and let's go! If you think this video sounds fun, this is mostly what I make, so you can go ahead and subscribe. Let's get into it. The trip started at 4 a.m., leaving and driving out of the Bay Area onto California's The Five. And it was a lot of this. It looked like the Midwest at sunrise. We stopped at this really great Mexican spot called Lola's and then kept on driving. We got to see the snow and all of the beautiful desert on our way. Even made a couple of pit stops when there were particularly pretty moments to capture. And truly, the rock formations stunned me. I got to drive off-road, experience things I've never seen before, and really, I feel so accomplished having finished my first ever backpacking trip. So what I'm going to do is actually take you on a sketchbook tour of what I have here. This is the sketchbook that I brought with me on my first backpacking trip to Joshua Tree. My first trip to Joshua Tree, my first backpacking trip ever. And as you can see, my book is about a little more than halfway filled and the pages are kind of buckling. Part of that is from my cat spilling water all over the sketchbook. And part of that is just me really loading the pages up with paint. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, my first page here, this probably looks a little bit familiar to you if you saw my video about creating my backpacking kit for my trip to Joshua Tree. So this is where I swatched all of my supplies. So that way when I'm working out in the landscape, if I wanted to figure out which color I wanted to use, I can see how they actually appear on the paper. And that makes life a little bit easier for me. So I could, I took all of my alcohol markers and I put what their names were, all of my different Prismacolor colored pencils, my wax pastels, and my water-based brush pens. On this page, I also tested adding gouache on the opposite side of the alcohol markers to see if I'd be able to work with the left-hand pages in my sketchbook. Typically, when I work with an alcohol-based marker, I only use the right-hand side of my sketchbook. I never use the left-hand side. And so because this is such a tiny sketchbook, I really wanted to take full advantage of all of the pages and decided to see what would it be if I went ahead and did that. So this first drawing here is of Jumbo Rocks. This is a campground in Joshua Tree National Park. I did this drawing from a photograph that I found online before heading out on my trip. And that was really helpful because I was able to actually figure out which of the colors in my palette over here I didn't have enough of or I had too many of when I was working on my test. So again, this page on the right, this is of an image I found online by just searching Joshua Tree on Pinterest. I found this cool looking house. I really like the dome style architecture here and how it mimics these different cactuses. And then on the left, these are two pages done, or two paintings done on this page with gouache. So at the very top and bottom, I used a tube of acrylic gouache in order to seal the bleed from these markers and then I just work directly on top. So this is with just standard artist squash and this is the San Bernardino mountains covered in snow. Definitely a thing that made me excited that I didn't expect. And then over here on the left I also have this little house that I spotted. This was near the Noah Parafoy Art Museum. Definitely a cool place to check out when you're in Joshua Tree. It's totally free. But what I love is the way that people decorate their homes and paint their homes in this area. They're really bright, they're really bold, and they use a lot of materials that are inspired by assemblage sculpture. So, see here? All right, next up, on the right, I have a drawing that I was doing to warm up before my trip. 
I never saw cactuses in this style anywhere in Joshua Tree, so I, this must be the desert somewhere else along in the Mojave Desert or in Arizona. And then over here, I have some cool rocks. So I really love this page because of the way that the alcohol marker bled through and created a sense of pattern on the page. And then I have my rocks formed by magma. So all of the rocks in Joshua Tree that you see, like those standard formations, kind of like this, they are actually made out of granite. So they were all made underneath the earth by magma and then slowly over time erosion allowed them to be revealed. The sun has decided to come out and bless us on this very rainy day in the Bay Area, so you might see the lighting change a little bit. Next up down here is my first tiny sketch of my favorite rock formation that we found called Triangle Rock. I absolutely loved this spot and it's definitely where we're going to backpack next time we go. And then here I have a quick little close-up of some of the lichen that would grow in Joshua Tree. They were lime green, like the color of Gatorade lime green. It was awesome to see. All right, next up this spread. On the right, I have Arch Rock, which is in Joshua Tree. This is done from a photo reference I found online. When I tried to go to Arch Rock in person, it was so crowded. The one downside to going to Joshua Tree on a holiday weekend when the temperature is really mild is that there is a lot of people that had the same idea and I was so overwhelmed by the crowds that I actually didn't make it to this particular moment um, but I had it already I experienced so many other rock formations like this and because we were backpacking we had a lot of formations like this all to ourselves like this one here on the left this is Triangle Rock, another painting that I did based on a photo that I took. And this one has so much more sentimental value to me than this one that I think so many people see. Both of these types of rock formations, before I went to Joshua Tree, I thought they were sandstone, similar to what you see in Arches National Park. I figured, oh, if it's an arching rock, it has to be sandstone. But it turns out they are actually a type of granite. They're a granite monzonite. So most of these rocks, what's really cool is seeing them at sunset or just even at midday, they really sparkle and they have all of these gorgeous little flecks in them that made them really fun to draw. I love them. I love painting granite. All right, next spread here. On the right, this is from a picnic that I went on with my friend Regina. There is this cool place called Civic Park in Walnut Creek, California. It's this just nice little area where you can just hang out and draw. So we set up a little art picnic and drew together and this is what I made. I also made some quick little black and white sketches. These are really helpful for me when it comes to drawing in the landscape because oftentimes because I like to work from photos, when I start drawing in the landscape, I try to add too many things that I see into one composition. So making these quick little black and white compositional sketches are a great way for me to figure out, okay, what things do I want to put in? Where is the highest form of contrast? And what are my general shapes? Then here on the left, again, the alcohol marker is bleeding through and creating a great pattern. I have some things from our first night. So the first night we got there, we did not backpack because we didn't know what time we would arrive. So we didn't want to try to find a backpacking spot in the dark, but we went to what's called Black Rock Campground. It's on the very west, northwest end of the park. And these are some awesome different moments that I found. So this is a metaphoric metamorphic rock schist so it has all these cool little lines and then some lichen growing underneath it that lime green lichen as well as this kind of golden marigold colored lichen and then sunset so here we are setting up camp at black rock canyon campground for the first night we got there actually around noon luckily leaving at four really paid off so we were able to pack up our day packs and head out on a hike after we got camp set up here is the hike. We decided to do the west side loop that is actually accessible right from the campground. It's really beautiful. So excellent to just get there and immediately get immersed in nature. We even got to have a fire that night, which is typically pretty rare for campsites in California. 
All right, another spread here. So these two drawings were from that same picnic. And then these two drawings were actually done at the second campsite. So the first night of backpacking was actually pretty awesome. However, it was a little more challenging in my body than I had originally anticipated. Because we had to carry all of our water, that meant that I was carrying about 40 pounds of weight on my back miles into the backcountry. But once we got to our campsite, I started to feel really comfortable and really excited. And we set up our tent and started to set up our sense of camp. Here we are getting our tent set up. The wind was cooperating for us, so it made this process not too difficult. Then we went on a hike to the Hexahedron Mine Trail. gorgeous valley that we were in and when we got back it was almost sunset so it was time to start on dinner we got everything out of the bear can got the stove set up and got dinner started here is our campsite this is in what's called the pleasant valley zone i highly recommend it as a first time backpacker The next morning, we had breakfast and coffee, and we got to see the sunrise. It's so gorgeous to see the colors that come out right as the sun starts to peek its head around the mountain. After witnessing this view, we packed up camp and got going on our next day. And then this on the left is from that hike at Black Rock Campground. So similar environment to this. I found it really cool how the Joshua trees actually grow directly out of the granite formations. And I really wanted to capture some of the fun colors and variation in line that happens with all of the different brushes and grasses that exist in the park. So here we are again back on the west side trail over at the black rock canyon campground i wanted you to see this shot because of all of the beautiful golden light reflecting through all of the different plants that exist in the desert i really really love this ecology and i found it so inspiring experience some of this hike with me and what i saw snowy mountains out in the distance. All right. On the right, here's two more drawings from our second campsite. Here is the proof of this sketch at camp set up in our little dinner kitchen area and sketched our tent once we got it set up. So the first, this is our tent set up. And I want to show you this tent set up because it collapsed on us. <laughs> um, it was, I'm glad this happened and I'm glad it happened on our last night of backpacking right before we were going to pack out and leave. So. This is what's called a trekking pole tent. So it's actually held up here and here by the poles that you use for hiking. And then it has a couple of other stakes all around. And because we staked this into the sand, it wasn't as secure as I would have liked it to be. And one of the stakes, like one of the lines for the stakes, 
was running here and actually attached to this kind of brushy area. And when my partner got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, he tripped over this and didn't realize. And slowly this hiking pole started dipping and dipping and dipping. And the problem with this is a backpacking tent is usually very lightweight. So it doesn't have a separate outer rain fly that collects all the condensation that you get from your breathing. So this actually completely collapsed in on us and all of the condensation from the top of the tent fell onto our sleeping bags and our sleeping pads. And so we woke up cold and wet in the desert. So highly recommend before you go to sleep make sure that you tie some kind of bright ribbon or something like that on the edges of your tent and if you're in the sand one thing that we learned from this is that our tent actually has some extra places where we can tie it down in addition to the front pieces so we'll definitely be staking our tent out a little bit more to avoid that on our next trip but it was a fun learning experience it got us up before sunrise and allowed us to see a little bit more of the park before the end of our trip now this is actually of Triangle Rock. So I mentioned in the video as well that I got to do some sketching and just sit and exist on our trip. It was truly gorgeous finding this formation. Stunning, right? And here is the drawing I made and the place that I was sitting. Slowing down is something that is kind of rare when you're backpacking, so this was pretty cool. And then here on the left are some more sketches from the West Side Loop Trail at the Black Rack Campground. And this was a dead tree. And what I really loved about this one in particular was that this dead tree was actually a house and a pantry for all of the birds nearby. It was full of holes and caverns for birds to cache their different seeds and all of their all of their little bird magic. And down here I have my thumbnails from the last video that you saw. So I was filming and I realized there were definitely some things that I needed to add. And so here I am making some thumbnails. All right, next page. On the right, here are some more sketches. I'm actually gonna bring this a little closer to the camera. Here are some more sketches from Triangle Rock. I really loved just working with colored pencil and just observing. It's rare that I let myself slow down when I am outside, but this was just such an absolute pleasure to do. The view was amazing, and there were so many formations similar nearby that we had to go explore as well. And then over on the left, these are two from a pull-off on geology to a road. So to get to the area where we backpacked, I'll show a little map on the screen here. We actually had to take this four x four road called geology to a road. And it was really fun. I love driving on dirt roads now. Um, as someone who's originally from the city, you know I've truly gone feral when I tell you I enjoy <laughs> driving on dirt roads. It was kind of like mountain biking with my car. I had to be really cautious and watch for the areas where there were boulders or rocks, but overall I was able to do it without even getting stuck once. But these were two separate pull-offs, and this one in particular was a fun experiment to see if I could fake the light of sunset, and I'm going to attempt to paint based on this inspiration a larger scale painting here. We'll see how it goes. I'm really nervous about this one, but I will post the process if I love it. If I hate it, I will tell you about it. All right, on to the next page. Okay, some more sketches. These were just in black and white using warm gray and cool gray from Prismacolor of Triangle Rock, kind of some of the formations lower. And then I also started to get really, really excited about drawing my gear. So once I got back, I started to think about how I want to encourage more artists to try backpacking 
because it really wasn't that hard or grueling. Especially in a place like Joshua Tree, it was mostly flat. Yes, I was carrying almost 40 pounds with all of the water I had to pack in and pack out. That is one downside to Joshua Tree, is you have to carry all of your water rather than filtering the water that you see out on the trail. But it was really fun to start thinking about how to make this more approachable and kind of create these little infographics for folks. So having all of my gear, this is everything that I strapped to my back, so my sleeping pad, we had the tent here, my camp sandals, I also had an extra rumple blanket, uh, my camera is in this bag here, and then my Nalgene, and I forget what was here, oh, oh yeah, my water bladder. Yeah, I had to carry so much water. Alright, next up. Alright, on the right, here's a little bit more of that infographic, so how to eat when backpacking. This is our camping setup, so we have are two different coffee cups. I really like the ones that are carabiners and they're aluminum. I got these as a gift from my little sister who is an outdoor educator. And then a blender bottle with some protein powder for quick meals. I have our little tank for creating a stove, the parts of our stove, our utensils that fold up our coffee filter for the morning, and our tiny little collapsible pot that most of this fits inside of. And then here on the right, here is me faking a sunset of Triangle Rock. Now what was fun is we were at Triangle Rock before the sunset happened. So kind of midday, because we wanted to get back to camp so that way we could make our food, enjoy the sunset, do some stargazing, go to bed but I was able to take some photos early in the morning at sunrise from far away because Triangle Rock was about a mile and a half from where we camped. And so I was able to take some visual notes of how I wanted it to look. And this was a fun experiment. What I'm loving about sketchbooking is that it allows me to be more playful with my mark making than I would be in a, in a painting traditionally. I'm normally very, um, <laughs> very exact and I want to be in control of how I approach every bit of a painting. But what I love about sketchbooking is it really allows me to leave things more abstract, let go a little bit more often, and I think that's important to do. All right, next page here. All right, on the right, here is what we ate when backpacking. So we had all of our food in this thing that's a bear canister, and what's nice about these is they strap to the very bottom of your bag. My partner carried the bear canister, and it also functions as a seat, which is very nice. Then we had power bars for snacks. One thing that we did and kind of made as a mistake on our first trip is we didn't eat enough. I made all of these DIY dehydrated meal MRE things and I also brought lots of instant mashed potatoes for us but because we were hiking we just weren't listening to our body's hunger signals or the hunger signals weren't as loud as they normally are so like things like granola and trail mix. These are things that are typically very, very high in calorie, as well as these kind of energy bars, and we didn't eat enough of them. So I highly recommend, if you're backpacking, to try and make yourself stop and eat as often as possible. And I know that that sounds kind of crazy, but it's important because your food is your fuel. So I think I got a little bit bonked out when you haven't eaten enough and you're in a calorie deficit and you just don't want to go any further because your body is like, I am exhausted. And backpacking can be pretty grueling. So I definitely recommend making sure that you eat enough. I brought tiny little containers of hot sauce, loads and loads of tea, and then coffee, some ground coffee, um, some dehydrated meals that I actually paid for too from REI, and then some electrolyte packs, and this is the high calorie trail mix. So seriously, when you are going backpacking, you need to look for things that are high in calorie. It will save you. 
All right, on the left, this is another rock formation that we saw pulling off on Geology Tour Road. This was my first experience up close with these rocks, and it was amazing to see them. To know that I was gonna spend so much time here. And with this one, I just really embraced this ultramarine blue for all of my shadows. All right, on the right here is my bathroom stuff infographic. I'm going to be turning a lot of these things you see into a zine, so if you're interested in that, definitely sign up for my email list, and I have a link to that down below so you can know when it gets released. I'm gonna make a limited number of them, but I really want them to be in existence to encourage other artists to go backpacking because it doesn't have to be so intimidating. All right, so for this, I have a nylon bag with a zipper, sunscreen. I am a ghost, so I need to wear sunscreen, but even if you have more melanin than I do, please make sure that you wear sunscreen because you're gonna be out and you're gonna be exposed to UV way more than you're used to if you're out backpacking. Then I have a my inhaler. Hello, fellow asthmatics or fellow long haul COVID people. I always have to have my inhaler there. Um, I also didn't draw it here, but I have long COVID medication that I keep with me on my trip in my bathroom stuff kit. I also have toothbrush, tiny decanters of toiletries. Do not bring a whole entire container of your stuff. Like this is my Dr. Bronner's Castile soap. I put that in here. And then the tiny decanters of toiletries, I'll actually show these to you. I just used, I just used some extra paint containers. So I got these from Michael's. They are specifically for holding extra paint. I use them for holding my extra acrylic paint, but the ones that I didn't use, I used for my bathroom toiletries and they're kind of the perfect size and really lightweight. So you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money. You probably already have stuff in your art supply kit. All right, so toothpaste, floss. Um, I really like to get face wipes. This helps me feel clean when I'm backpacking. So face wipes or baby wipes are a good thing to have with you to give yourself, you know, a bath in the morning. And then these two things are for going to the bathroom in the woods. I really like to have my gardening knife. So this is called a Hori Hori knife. It is a Japanese style gardening knife and it's serrated on one edge. I freaking love this thing. I love using it in the garden, but it also has a ruler on it so you can make sure that the hole you dig is deep enough and then you've got to have your backpacking toilet paper as well. All right, over here, this was based on a photograph from our first day backpacking. This is the Hexahedron Mine Trail. So it's in the Pleasant Valley Fried Liver Wash area. And what I loved were all of these giant cacti that were bright pink. So a bright pink, almost red color. They were really, really cool. So definitely worth checking out that area. It was kind of tricky to hike on that trail because of how loose the rocks were. So it ended up taking us quite a while to get back down. Next page. So then this is a drawing of all the things I bring for water on the trail. So this is a Sawyer water filter and then I keep it inside of a bag. I learned from Miranda Goes Outside, one of my favorite backpacking channels here on YouTube, that your Sawyer water filter should go in your sleeping bag with you when you're going to bed because if this freezes, it can't filter water. So then this is my water bag from Sawyer, so that way I can put my water that I find, hook it up to my filter, and then filter that right into my bottle. I love my Nalgene. I love to use this for holding my water and taking big gulps. Whereas my water bladder, sometimes those can be one, very tricky to clean. Um, the only way I have figured out to truly clean my water bladder is baking soda and lemon juice. It's the only way. And then I tried bleach. I tried those little detergent pods you buy for your bladders and nothing worked, but that worked. Um, and then there's also the option for these iodine tablets. Those can also disinfect your water. They taste really gross. It's good to have them just in case 
because you can go several days without food. But if you don't have enough water, that is how people die. So make sure that you have a water filter on you. I actually think this is an important thing to bring with you on day hikes in case you end up going a little bit further, like I tend to, and putting yourself in a situation where you might not have enough water. Um, typical rule of thumb with water and hiking is that once you've gone through about half of your water, it's time to turn around. Okay, over here, I have two sketches that I made over on Lime Ridge open space. So I decided the other day that my partner went into the office and I didn't want to be by, at home by myself. So I decided, hey, I'm, I'm gonna go bike my way to a trailhead and sit there and paint. So I rode my gravel bike on this fun little trail, pulled over and just painted the early spring blooms. So this is wild mustard, which is not great, but it's pretty. And then the oak trees in this oak savanna here on Mount Diablo. Right, over here, first aid kit, just in case. I haven't finished the painting on this page, and I will. So if you wanna know what this turns out like, definitely stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. So I have here my, so here I have my nylon zip bag. So another bagu bag that I use for my first aid kit. And on the end, I have a whistle. So just in case of an emergency, whistles are of a frequency that is so loud that it will screech and you have a higher likelihood of being rescued if need be. Then I have a wilderness survival guide, a first aid manual, and I'll show a picture here of our first aid manual. My partner is so cute. I love that what he does is he takes the first aid manual and puts in all of those little flags to see exactly what particular issue you might be having and where to get there. And his reasoning for it was really smart. He was like, the last thing you want to do is to be flipping through a book when you're in the state of an emergency to try to figure out how to fix something. So very smart. This right here. E is my poncho in case I run into some rain. I also had a bag cover, so a waterproof rain cover for my backpack as well in case we hit some rain. We really lucked out and it did not rain while we were there, but a huge rainstorm came in as we were leaving. G is my medi bag, which I'll show on the next page. I also have some paracord rope, some shoelaces, an extra inhaler, because again, you have to have it headlamp and extra batteries for the headlamp. So one thing that I learned on this trip is that if your batteries go bad inside your headlamp, your headlamp's not gonna work. So my headlamp worked on night one and then on night two, it didn't wanna turn on. And when I opened up the back case, it turned out that the batteries had gone bad. Um, so definitely check your batteries before you head out. Next up, let's go into the Medi bag. All right, so for our Medi bag, I have a clear plastic storage bag, cleansing wipes, bandages, a signal mirror, nitrile gloves, just in case. I also have antibiotic ointment, DEET wipes for bugs. It's not good to spray DEET around different animals and environments, but these allow me to prevent myself from getting bit by all the mosquitoes. Then an emergency blanket. These are, they kind of look like aluminum foil, but they'll keep you super warm if you're really cold. Swiss Army Knife. Cool thing about a Swiss Army Knife is that it has both scissors and tweezers, as well as a knife. Then lots of different types of gauze, large scale bandages, and moleskin. In case you have a blister, you can kind of pull off on the side of the road if you feel it starting to form and just cover it. Blister protection is so, so, so important. And then let's see here. So pain relief, allergy relief. Another backpacking YouTuber that I follow here suggested making sure you have anti-nausea or anti-diarrhea medication. I hate having to talk about that kind of stuff, but um, if you were to get sick, it can dehydrate you really fast. And again, if you're packing your own water, that can lead to an emergency situation. So definitely make sure you have things like that on hand. Blister covers, 
sun hand lotion and bug itch lotion, nail clippers, and a knife. And then this was my morning commute to Lime Ridge. So I made this painting the other day. This is my bike that I rode. I love my bike. And then this is super cute. So I decided to actually draw my kits that I take out with me. So when I went out here and I painted with gouache, I actually used this gouache kit you see here. So I have labeled all of my different paint colors and I will definitely link those down in the description. I'll put my entire list of all the gouache paints that I use, the different brushes I use. So a filbert, a half inch filbert, a half inch angle shader, a 20 round liner, it's so itty bitty, um, a standard liner, and then a quarter inch angle shader. I also bring paper towel and I recently upgraded to a fully collapsible cup for my water. I also usually bring a sitting pad and then this is my packed art kit that I brought with me backpacking. When it was packed, it was 10 inches by seven and a half inches. And then my art kit for hiking and backpacking, these are all of the things. So I've got my water-based brush pens, my alcohol-based markers. I put a star next to this because I learned in Joshua Tree, if it's hot and dry, these could get damaged. So I started working on the drawing of my tent that I'll go back to here. And the markers started to dry out back here. And I got really kind of scared because they are expensive. They're about seven to nine dollars each. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna put these away so they don't get damaged. So if it's a really dry climate, maybe skip your alcohol markers and leave those home. Uh, next up, we've got my sketchbook, which actually fit inside of here, which was really thrilling. Uh, my colored pencils, my X-Acto blade that's retractable that I can use for sharpening these pencils, and then my wax pastels. Again, with wax pastels, they are wax, so are your colored pencils. So you do run the risk, if it's over 80 degrees, these could melt, so you might want alternative supplies. And lastly, navigation. <laughs> so thinking about making sure you have maps, you have a, a compass that you know how to use. Luckily, my watch actually has a compass built in, but it does require loads of charging so keep that in mind um, you want to make sure that you have a compass so that way you don't get lost when you are out in the wilderness so definitely worth practicing before you go out i had the big map so we had the national geographic joshua tree national park map this was a great point of reference to get us specifically in the areas we were and make us feel a sense of at home and then we also i we had a printout of Caltopo of the different backpacking zones we were in. So when you backpack, you actually have to tell the National Park Service, hey, I'm gonna be here. You have to give them an itinerary. You have to tell them what you're doing and they have to know where to find you in case anything happens. So we were able to give them an itinerary of which zone we'd be in. So that way, if we weren't heard from for some terrible reason, they would know where to look for us. And then we also got, my partner decided to order a USGS map for the specific zone we were in backpacking. And this was our favorite map to use. So if you're gonna go backpacking, I highly recommend seeing if there's a USGS zone map for that area, because it made it really easy for us to get oriented as to where we were and then take notes. So that way, when we come back next time, not only can we reuse this map, but it becomes a friendly little reminder of our favorite spots. And you'll wanna bring a pencil or a pen for writing under map. And anything that is printed off with inkjet printing, or honestly, if it's paper, put it inside a plastic bag. That way, just in case, if it does get wet, it's not going to get ruined. All right. For the very end of our trip, I surprised my partner with showers and a really unique hot spring experience. We got to sit in this incredible marble tub and experience the water of a natural hot spring. It was awesome. Highly recommend checking it out if you are gonna be in the area. So now I'm in the blank space and I have to fill the rest of this sketchbook before the 18th 
of March. So I am really looking forward to having that deadline and finishing it up. So stay tuned for another episode where I give you a full tour of this sketchbook and I show you how I finished this sketchbook in less than a month. Thanks for watching. Leave me a comment down below to share your favorite part and definitely stick around for more adventure art.